This tutorial is looking at section 5.6 in your textbook titled How Elements Form Compounds. We will do a quick recap of grade 9 uh, definitions uh, of matter, move into uh, Bohr diagrams, and we'll use that understanding to then move to Lewis dot diagrams, which will help us understand more about how elements form compounds. Recall last year learning about the matter flowchart. We learned that matter was anything that had mass and occupies space. And that was divided into pure substances and mixtures. Today we are focusing on uh, elements and compounds and understanding the differences between those. Elements are the smallest indivisible particles which make up the world around us. And uh, you will find these listed on the periodic table of elements. If you're unsure about that, you can check our previous tutorial. Compounds are what we see most of. Elements uh, come together and form compounds with fixed ratios, and those are the things that we see in the world around us. There are two main classes of compounds that we're going to talk about in Science 10. The first one are ionic compounds, and the second group is molecular compounds. Um, ionic compounds are formed from unions between metals and nonmetals. This is the main difference, and molecular compounds are formed from unions of nonmetals with other nonmetals, or sometimes themselves. Within an ionic compound, there are a couple different classes that we're going to look at in more detail later. Um, one of them being multivalent ionic compounds and also polyatomic compounds. But for now, we just want to introduce them as the two separate groups we're going to be looking at. Let's look back at grade 9. Uh, when we first started talking about matter and those smallest indivisible particles uh, called atoms. I'm going to use two as an example, uh, magnesium and oxygen. And if you recall, um, magnesium would have 12 protons. We'll look here at the periodic table and we'll just find magnesium over here, number 12. So its atomic number is 12, which means that it has 12 protons and 12 electrons as an atom. So we'll go back here and we'll start to make Bohr diagrams. And you'll recall that you know the first orbital, this is how we drew them in grade nine, um, could could occupy two electrons. So we have twelve protons in magnesium and we have twelve electrons in magnesium, and so we need to place 12 electrons and so we have two already in that first energy level and if you remember well, it's, it's full after two and then everything else after that was eight as far as we learned and so you draw okay so we have two three four five six seven eight nine ten and so that's eight in the second level and now it's full, so we have to add another level, or orbital, and we have 10 placed, so that means we have two to go. So we'd place two like this. And that would be the Bohr diagram for magnesium. Oxygen, recall, if we look over at oxygen on the periodic table, it's over here, number eight. So it means that it has eight protons and eight um, electrons when it's on its, its kind of at atomic state. So there's O, which represents a nucleus, protons, and neutrons. And we have to place eight. So again, two, the first energy level, that's full. And we need to place eight. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it has eight protons and we placed eight electrons in it. And so those are what are called the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams or Bohr diagrams. 
This outer shell is called the valence shell. And it contains the electrons that chemists know actually are involved in reactions. So we are going to look at those later on. But w the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to draw Lewis dot diagrams using Bohr diagrams as sort of a, a springboard into this. If you recall from the periodic table, and we've done a number of Bohr diagrams at this point. So if you recall the periodic table, there are uh, groups and this group is group one. This is group two. And you'll have noticed the relationship as you drew your board diagrams, you would have noticed that all of the ones in group two would have had two electrons in their outer energy level or their valence shell, just like magnesium did when we drew it. In group one, they would all have one electron in their valence shell. And uh, over here, you would have, you know, this is group 17, it had seven valence electrons in it. This is group 16, it had six valence electrons, and group 15, five, and 14, and four. And this was 13, and they had three valence electrons. And so that that's really what the most important part of, of chemical reactions are, and those electrons getting transferred. So let's jump back here to this diagram, and we'll look at how to draw the Lewis dot diagrams for these these two in, in particular. Let's start with uh, just drawing the symbol. And the symbol for a Lewis dot diagram actually encompasses the, all of the inner rings. So basically everything from here, all of this stuff in here, these electrons, then protons and neutrons, it's a simplified way of dealing with it and we're just going to call it mg. And as a result, the only kind of electrons that you show in a Lewis dot diagram are the valence electrons and here you have two and so we just indicate that with two little dots. You don't even need to draw the ring, you just draw the two little dots because they're the only ones that are involved. There's only one ring so no need to draw a circle. Over here we would do the same thing. We draw the O which would represent the inner fullest or the full rings and the inner protons and neutrons. So that that's really all of this stuff. This one's this valence shell is quite not quite full, so we're going to have to draw it. One, two, three, four, and then this one has six. And so, if we look at the periodic table of elements, you can go through, and you can draw board diagrams for all of these. We know that all of the ones in group 17, that's all of these ones, are all going to have seven valence electrons. All of the ones in, in group 16 are going to have six valence electrons, so they're all going to look like the one we just drew. So let's jump back to um, here, and if we want to do like sulfur, for instance, is right underneath of oxygen, so let's draw sulfur, and sulfur is in group 16, and it has six valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, another one with two is calcium. Calcium would have two valence electrons. It's in group two. Uh, you know, here's some other ones that, you know, like sodium is in group one, so it has one valence electron. You know, iodine is over in group 17, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. And so Lewis dot diagrams are relatively simple to draw as long as you can understand the relationship between the valence shell up here the outer shell and uh, where they are positioned in the periodic table